so I've built another studio. I'm sure the first question will be, why? Well, as a family we decided, it was the best thing for us to do to move back closer to London, to Hertfordshire in fact, back to where we used to live. So we are back here now, and it gave me the opportunity to really think about um, a studio space. And when we built the old studio, it was defined by the size of the barn that we were replacing. And so I filled it with loads of stuff. So this gave me the opportunity to actually think, what, what have I used in there? What did I not use? And what is important to my workflow? And can I kind of try and tighten it all up a bit and get something that is much more streamlined, has everything that I use all the time, and kind of, there were elements to the old studio that were a little bit uh, unnecessary. There was a lot of stuff in the studio that I just didn't use. And I had all these ideas and then COVID hit, and you know, what was gonna be a space where I invited people to come up and play just never happened. Um, so there were things like that, things like the tape deck, you know, things like my drums. It was great having drums and playing drums, practicing and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is, if I needed a decent drum track, I'd be going to a studio and recording a decent drummer. So I basically sat and thought about it for a long time. And I thought, what is the thing that, what, what do I need to get out of this? And what I decided to do was to build a garden room. So I'm going to share all of the details of the build below. Um, and the, the plan and everything, but I'm going to show you around what I've got here um, and why I've made the decisions I did. It's just going to be a little short one and then we'll be back to the normal content of uh, me trying to kind of download all of the stuff that I know about composing, specifically for film, TV, video games, um, and get back onto that kind of stuff as well. And as you can see, I've got a very, very basic setup in here. Um, I've just gone no frills, so I'm not putting loads of lights up, I'm not doing all that stuff. It's going to be basic production values and all about the information. Okay, let's have a look around. Let's start with the desk. Um, I've gone for this uh, desk from AKA Design. It's based on the design that they did for the composer rooms at Air Studios. So um, actually David Arnold designed this <laughs> and I made a few small tweaks to it. But as you can see, it's got, uh, it's got some really useful stuff. It's got, you've got the racks at the side, and I asked them to, I'll show you actually. I asked them to just put a little bit more of a, um, of a, of a slope on those so that they are slightly more visible from the composer seat. I've got the dirt for built in, and I've got these fantastic, uh, really lovely um, desk covers that slot in along here so I can have either all three of those or just one or two so that I've got extra space to, to work if I'm writing something into my score. So as you can see I've got my drives, my audio interfaces, I've got my Mac Pro under the desk. Up on here I've got my Choice Source Designs Fader Box uh, from Chuck Choi which is absolutely fabulous, really love that. My Stream Deck, uh, the M905 which is the monitor and then in the top here, we've got the two distressors, Overstayer. The center is my master chain, and that's something that I really wanted to be able to change from my last studio, is to be able to sit in the sweet spot and be able to adjust uh, without moving my head. That's, that was really important, so I've got that sorted. And then on the right here, we've got some uh, fantastic uh, pre's. Um, so I've got a couple of different kind of flavors of pre in there. Down here on this side, we've got the patch bay, We've got the 8816. This was something I haven't used very much, but in fact has survived the cull. Um, so I'm looking forward to just to trying that out and getting that kind of sorted uh, in my workflow. It's not totally in there yet, but I'm, I'm positive about that. And then at the bottom here, we've got um, more mic pre's, um, lunchbox with mic pre's in. There's a few more bits and bobs over here, uh, lunchbox wise. So this is more uh, kind of, the EQs and compressors, all of this stuff coming up in the patch bay. I've got my, my old favorite here, my 1176, um, my SE1X, which I use from time to time, M7, again, used from time to time, probably not as much, um, you know, with cinematic rooms, a couple of other reverbs that I really like. Uh, the retro, uh, which is fantastic. Headphone amp for if I am playing stuff live or if I've got someone here working with me and then a few bits and bobs down there. Now down here we've got um, guitar stuff. So 
and this is not always guitar, actual guitar, although I do play guitar badly, um, but it is also about sending stuff out of the session and reamping it or kind of, you know, getting a vibe on it. So I've got a couple of different flavors here and my Helix at the bottom there. This is the mic corner, so bits and bobs, lots of mics to choose from. Mic's incredibly important. Um, even back to the days when I only had one or two mics and they were secondhand, <laughs> very cheap and battered. Um, your mic is just, it doesn't matter how good quality the mic is. If you've, got a, if you've got a mic, you can get reasonably good quality very, very inexpensively now. It's always good to get some live stuff into your track. So that's an absolute essential for me. Um, bits and bobs up here. There's also the Kemper profiling amp, which I really love. Um, these things are fabulous. Ultraphones uh, from G, God, my eyesight, GK Music, gk-music.com. Uh, I strongly advise you to check those out. They're basically um, like ear defenders with a really good quality headphone inside them. Uh, so very, very cool. Um, a few other bits and bobs. Um, let's see, what have we got? So it's actually worth talking about, oh, here we go first, keyboards. Uh, so, love this, <laughs> favorite keyboard. Um, I've got this, uh, the Roland System 8, which is really useful as well. And I've got a couple of different models in there. So that's fabulous. The Jupiter 80 has got some incredible sounds in it. Um, and so the way that I use these is not from the session. Um, I'll play stuff in. Um, and I like them being like separate musical instruments. So I have to do a take and I get the take right or I don't get it right. So they're not midied into the system now. It's been freeing not having them midied in, weirdly. A um, couple of little live bits and bobs down here as well. Very important, aircon. Um, and you know the the other usual stuff you've seen my speakers from the other place the barefoots they're really great love those i've got a decent pair of headphones everyone's always asking about headphones i really love the akgs these are k702s i guess but i've had them for years now um and every so often that you 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 know they come up with a slight update but it's not significantly different so that's all good my guitar's down here um uh, just you know I'm not a great player, but I can play well enough to get the idea down. And then if it's something that's really complicated and needs a decent player, obviously um, there's a lot of fantastic players in London. So that's that stuff. Now, something that's really important is having some good uh, room treatment. And this stuff up here, if you can see that, is absolutely fabulous. And this was from our friends at Output. Um, they had uh, some great acoustic treatment and I've got some of that stuff up there. There's some here behind, uh, you can see, and then uh, a couple of panels up here. They're surprisingly effective for the small space that they occupy, and they look pretty cool as well. And then beyond that, I've got, you can see behind me here, um, some stuff here from Gig Acoustics. It's the, uh, you know, that, that kind of rock wall type stuff. And then down the back, we'll go, I'll show you down the back. There's a couple of, um, panels a deep bass trap which really helps and then this thing down there can you see that i don't know if you can see that you can kind of just about see it can't you um this is this fabulous little thing it's a trinov um it's it's was something i had to think really carefully about uh, before adding it to the studio because it's it's really expensive but because i decided to build a smaller room and i wasn't going to go nuts with the acoustic treatment I decided it was really worth it to get a, uh, a kind of better monitoring environment. And I have to say, it makes an enormous difference. I have no idea how they do it. It's, it's like wizardry, but it is incredibly good. So that's the, that's the studio. Um, as you can see, it, it's, I've gone for um, compact, everything within easy reach. Um, I simplified a lot of stuff. I was really struggling with the, I had a very, very configurable guitar effects pedal system with two of the Roland system, uh, I can't remember what they're called now, the guitar switches. And I just was, it was stopping me using the stuff because it was so complicated. I actually, every time I worked it out and then came back to it a couple of weeks later, I'd forgotten how to use it again. So what I've got now is all of my guitar effects are just switchable from the, um, 
or a patchable rather from the patch bay straight. So if I if I'm on a session and I want to put something on, uh, you know, put it through the big scar, the timeline or whatever, I just patch it straight in and either record it back into the session or leave it live uh, and carry on fiddling around with it. So everything has gone for uh, simplicity. Um, there was something I've watched, an interview with the with um, the fabulous. Well, yeah, I'm sure that everyone everyone's been Rick Rolled at least once, um, but the fabulous Rick Astley, very very lovely guy, talented talented musician, and he described building this uh, enormous studio with all this kind of crazy expensive equipment in it, and said it was just a massive folly. And after a few years, he um, realised that he just needed to compact his, his kind of system down and just get the stuff that he actually wanted to use. And the funny thing is, that's the journey that I've been on. I watched this video actually just before we were moving, so it was quite useful to see that at the time and to get back to kind of basics on this. And the funny thing is, I've been a lot more productive in here um, than I was in the other studio. Really weird. I loved the other studio. I loved, you know, the building and and it was a lot of fun, but it just, there's a lot of stuff that, it just reinforced for me, there's a lot of stuff you don't need. And that is that. <laughs> so that's a quick look at the new studio. Um, like I say, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm planning to talk about in terms of, uh, you know, music theory and composition and working with clients and looking at video games as well. But anything that, you know, anybody's interested in that you think I might know something about that I might have worked on, um, just bung questions down below uh, and I will start to work my way through. Like I say, I'm a little bit waffly uh, at the best of times, but I will, I'm going to, this is, I'm going to be no frills from now on. So I'm going to be, like I say, the basic setup and we're just going to be looking at the screen feed and one camera, maybe a camera on the keys but I'm not gonna spend ages lighting stuff and making it, trying to make it look all fancy. It's just gonna be about the information. Um, YouTube is just the most fantastic educational resource um, that, that has ever existed. So, and there's some stuff that I know, you know, I don't know everything, <laughs> of course. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know anything about, but the little stuff that I do know about, I'm gonna share as much as I can. And, uh, and it'll be interesting, it'll be fun. So this is the next stage, the next evolution of my YouTube journey. Um, it's been nice having a break from it for a while, but uh, it's going to be fun being back. So see you soon.